46 is brought to you by Dr. George Leakes, Harum's optometrist since 1990, offering full spectrum eye care for children and adults. Call today, 727 8300. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Tonight on News 46, a driver loses control and hits a power pole. An SUV ends up on top of the Calvetta Fountain and widespread power outages affects area residents. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Monday, April 25th, 2016. I'm Deanne O'Donnell for News 46. The driver and passenger of a red Camaro luckily escaped injury after losing control of their vehicle, striking a power pole and rolling the car yesterday afternoon. Late afternoon, we were dispatched a report of a one vehicle rollover that also took out a utility pole and now is on fire. Our crews upon arrival found a fully involved vehicle. We found a telephone or utility pole that had been sheared and was suspended by the overhead wires. So it created additional scene hazards for us. Crews came in, they commenced an attack. And it, we established pretty much of a safe area immediately around the vehicle. So they came around the safe area, extinguished the fire, and completed the investigation. There were two occupants in that vehicle. Both of them were able to self-extricate prior to fire department arrival. Neither of them wanted to have EMS treatment or transport to the hospital. So the whole bottom of the telephone pole was cut in two? Yeah, it appeared that the vehicle went into a side position and went into a slide along the desert floor. And as it did, it came upon a utility pole, took out the utility pole at the base, continued to uh, go past through through that pole, go into a rollover, and then end up upright on fire. It was uh, pretty high tension in the beginning because they were reporting that the car was on fire and there were still people inside. It was unknown the status of the occupants initially, but once the Sheriff's Department arrived on location, they determined that the occupants were safe and relayed that information to us. So Valley Electric came on scene. They, I'm sure they had to replace that whole entire pole. There was a power outage? They did. One of the things they wanted to do, there was immediate power outage in the immediate area. However, uh, what they really wanted to do was get that suspended pole out of the way, so they removed sections of the pole, allowing the wires to be suspended by the next closest poles and remove all that and then replace it. What kind of precautions do you take when you're at a situation where there's actually hot electrical wires at that time, uh, trying to rescue people from a vehicle that's on fire at the same time? In this particular case, we were quite lucky. The lines weren't down, so they were still at an elevated height, but we still had to be careful because we were you know, experiencing high winds. We were afraid that the next set of poles might become compromised and bring it down into the incident. And so they were able to secure that within a few hours? Did you guys stay on scene for that? No, once uh, Valley Electric secured it, de-energized the power sources and started removing sections of that pole, we were then cleared. And then any other uh, follow-up for the victims of the accident? No, Sheriff's Office will be completing their investigation and uh, they'll deem what's necessary. The fountain at the entrance of Calvada Boulevard and Highway 160 appears to have once again endured a vehicle striking it without any real damage to the structure. Friday afternoon, a large SUV ended up on top of the fountain. We were dispatched a report of a one vehicle accident with the car versus the fountain at the entrance of Calvada from Highway 160. And so how did this accident occur, do you know? We're uncertain. The Sheriff's Office at NHP were investigating, uh, but it appeared that there was a loss of control of the vehicle. It went over a, a small section of a roadway median and then into the fountain. Uh, so was there any injuries? No, the gentleman reported that he was uninjured. He refused any medical assistance whatsoever. Fire department remained on scene for a short while to make sure that there were no leaks or spills that would impact the water quality within the fountain or the nearby area. And so how is the fountain? What kind of damage is there? There was actually very little damage to the fountain, which was good. The vehicle, actually the tires placed the vehicle up and over and into the fountain. So very little impact to the fountain itself. And then pulling it off of that, what does that entail? Yeah, that was a little bit of a challenge, but uh, it was done in a fashion that didn't minimize the damage either of the vehicle or the fountain. 
A fire at the top of a wooden power pole in North Pahrump created a chain reaction of events, resulting in an outage to more than 3,000 Pahrump residents this morning. Power was restored to all Valley Electric Association members in just over an hour. According to VEA, the pole fire was the original source of the outage and was exacerbated by a relay failing to operate properly in the substation. Valley Electric Association says the power went out at 6.05 a.m. to all members and it was restored by 7.18 a.m. The pole is located west of Leslie Street and north of West Betty Avenue. According to the co-op, the cause was buildup of dust on a pole followed by a light drizzle, which created conditions that triggered the fire. They say light rain causes more trouble than heavy rain. Approximately 3,360 homes and businesses briefly were without power during the outage. Though pole fires are not uncommon, most don't cause widespread outages. A protective relay in the substation failed to operate properly, which caused this widespread outage. Repairs have been made to the pole and the relay in the substation. News 46 will return in just a moment.